This is just a simple one that happened in a um, Sam's Club parking lot. Okay. But not that one, so I may need some help from the clerk just to do an input change. self-identifying the source. It's on the screen on here. Just went off. Just went off the screen. I think um, since it's just the court, maybe if we could somehow approach the bench, you could see it off of his computer screen. I think that would probably satisfy the need for me to show a video unrelated to this. Fine, you may bring it up here. Council want to approach? <coughs> If you would advise the court, if you can hear us. Maybe you can hear us. Thanks. Yes, advise the court what it is um, that you're about to show. This, this is a sample of a motion file applied to a figure in the computer and dropped into the scene. And very quickly, how is this scene recreated so that it actually shows the environment that is the background for the event? Uh, this was all created in 3D software. And where the information come from? Uh, there was a security camera. It was very bad resolution, so I went out, measured the scene, and uh, placed the vehicles where they were on the in the video. And this is just a better representation of what they couldn't see in the security video. And in order to come up with those graphics, when you say you went out, measured the scene, and is that the information you then put into one of the graphics programs you mentioned earlier? Yes. And um, then. We're about to see the actual animation. So, how does the information concerning the movement or the animation get placed into the environment? I just imported from uh, 
just imported from the motion capture software. Okay. And what, and again, that's just something that you take from the water environment that you've created, and then when you put the oxygen into it, how does it get placed in the right location, and how does that occur? Uh, I can move the figures around according to where they were placed in the scene. I can move around, rotate them, and place them in the scene. Okay, so that's a manipulation that you can do based upon either advice of counsel, um, evidence in a courtroom, or even come up with alternatives as to how an event may occur, correct? Yes, it doesn't change their movement. I can just change their location in the scene. Okay. Go ahead and play that for the court then, if you would. So I actually used the shopping cart to position my hands correctly. So is that, is that then a, a graphic representation of information that you took from evidence, or witness statements, whatever, and then made a graphic representation of it on the screen? Yes. And um, when you say that the movement of the person um, how do you decide how the movement is, both the speed, the direction, and how does all that occur? It was timed from the security camera. Okay, as far as that, nothing, nothing further. Than that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now that we've had a chance to look at that um, animation, was there anything, before we get specifically to the German case, but to ask this, was there anything different in the software or the hardware that you used in that representation than the one that you've used in the Zimmerman case? Um, the Zimmerman case, there was more total station data. It wasn't data that I acquired. It was data that was provided. Um, from the DA's office. Okay, before we get to your specific work on this case, um, tell me, are there any um, coursework or training programs that you go through um, to either enhance your abilities to do this type of work or to maintain your level of confidence? Um, both in the ARIS 360 software, I've gone through classes in that and it's been, been trained in that. Um, I've been through three it's only required to be to go to go through one, but I've gone through three uh, total station data classes and been certified in using those in both ARIS 360 software and um, visual statement software. Let's talk about the total station for a moment. That's the, the software program you said that law enforcement <coughs> uses. The total station is the piece of equipment. It's a Sokia robotic total station. And actually, you know, in the Zimmerman case, that there was total station information available having been gathered by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, correct? Correct. In addition to um, those certifications that you mentioned, well, these total station certifications, who actually does the training for that? The software companies train them. Who own or license out the software? Yes. <clears throat> And what was the most recent time that you've taken any training regarding total station? Um, training in those courses for certification, I think it's, um, it's been a couple of years, it's on my CV, I can't remember the exact date, but also in uh, the Air 360 software, um, I continually update my skills in that. They have a webinar every Friday that I, that I watch. So on Total Station, um, have there been any significant changes in the software since your certification, or is it still basically the same program? The same. They come up with up. Uh, the software comes up with, with upgrades every six months or so. And how about uh, the ARIS 360 program? Do you uh, take training courses on that? And you mentioned the webinars every Friday. Yeah, I've gone through uh, training and certification on. Um, using that software, not only using the software, but using it with Total Station. And how long have you used the RS 360 software? Uh, when it first came out, I believe it's uh, 
two years ago in September, I think is when it came, first came out. You have the current version of that software? Yes. And up to date on your training with the current version? Yes. Any other software programs that you utilize um, in your general work in creating computer graphics and animations? The 3D software that I use is uh, it's Luxology, use Modo. I'm sorry, say that again, it's Photo for the court reporters? The company is called Luxology, and the software is Modo. M-O-D-O? Yes. And it's Luxology? Luxology, L-U-X. And explain to the court then what that 3D software is and how it differs from the other two we've mentioned so far. It's for creating 3D scenes. Um, they use it for animation movies, uh, uh, animated movies. Does that then give you or allow you to present the, the environment we talked about or the framework within which the animation is going to be created? Yes, it's an environment where you can take all the data and bring it into it and uh, create the scene. In it. So if you were to create an animation of this area, would you then do the dimensions, get the environment, and then start putting in elements like the desks and the credenzas and the clerk's desk, things like that? Yes. And how do you get those accurate? Uh, the measurements from the total station data. So the total station would be used in conjunction. It would bounce points off the various relative point or relevant points here and then sort of import it into the software, into the program? Yes. And then also, uh, one part of the AIRS 360 software is um, I have a helicopter. I haven't used it in this case. It's a uh, just a drone. And you fly it, I fly it above the scene. I can take a photograph of the scene. And then with that photo, I have the data points from the total station of the scene. I take the photo, and it'll lay it on. It'll drape it right onto those points, so you get a very accurate outdoor reconstruction of a scene. So in effect, you can get more of a bird's eye view of the situation and also make certain that the ground level scene is accurate based upon a comparison with those data points? Yes. Have you had an opportunity then to create these type of animations and discuss them in the context of civil and or criminal cases? Yes. And if you would give the court an idea over what period of time you've done that, and then we'll talk more specifically about the type cases and whether or not you've testified in court. Um, it's been an ongoing for the last 13 years of doing it for criminal and civil cases. What was the first time that you created and presented an animation um, in a court case? Not necessarily in a courtroom yet, but into a court case. Um, Two thousand nine. If you would then uh, tell the court, uh, have you ever then gotten to the point where your animations have been utilized in a courtroom? Yes and tell the court um, the experience that you've had in both civil and criminal settings regarding your testimony and admissibility of the animations. Well, also, the I use the motion capture suit not only for doing animations, but also to verify a person's position. I, uh, I did one a couple months ago where uh, a person was also in a vehicle. Uh, somebody came up shot through the window, and then shot a couple more times. And uh, I had to determine which shots were done with him in the car and which shots were done because the car door was open and then he fell down. So I had to verify his position when those three shots were fired. So in that animation, it explained to the court how the, is there a name for this motion suit? This it's a XN's. XSEN. XSEN? Yes, XN's uh, mo initial motion capture suit. Okay. And um, you used that in the shooting case, explain to the court how it benefited you and in the presentation of the animation. Um, 
what I did was I put on the suit, got into a vehicle that matched uh, the vehicle that was used, and recorded my movements of getting out of the vehicle. And then uh, I put it in the computer, and then in the, uh, the figure that matched uh, the victim, I put in the uh, rod to match the bullet trajectory, and then looked at his positions getting out of the car to see uh, what positions the bullet trajectory, trajectory would be, and if it was consistent with the height and the position of the shooter. Now let's talk about that um, in a little bit more context. So when you get in the car, you have the motion suit on, the, and it's communicating with a computer, correct? Correct. And so the computer knows exactly where the body is in that it knows exactly where all 16 accelerometers are, correct? Yes. You calibrate it at the beginning of your uh, recording. Calibrate for accuracy? Yes. And um, so at that point, you're doing movement, but the computer is actually gathering data on 16 discrete points in space that are moving throughout space? Is that yes. correct? Um, the computer at that point may not know it's a body. It just is keeping track of 16 data points. Would that be accurate? Uh, well, in real time on the laptop, you can see a mannequin. Okay. So if I move my arms up, the mannequin will follow all of my movements. Okay. Um, explain to the court how you handle the frailty of an animation because it is not the exact video of, in this case, the driver moving his arms one particular way, but rather you deciding how the arms ought to be moved and how the body moves. So how do you address that frailty of the animation? You look at certain things that you know from the discovery, like the bullet trajectory, uh, the opening of the door, and also the physical characteristics of the inside of the truck. And uh, you look at different scenarios to find which one best matches the uh, the scene and the evidence and discovery that you have. So in effect, do what you do is uh, do an animation that, at the point you create it, is consistent with the known information about the Do you then make your animation in consideration of the evidence known to you at the time? Yes. And if that information is modified or augmented by additional information, do you then modify your animation to come into conformity with that? Yes, whatever is most accurate. At the point in time then when you don the suit, like you mentioned a moment ago that the software allows you to change the configuration of the body for things like height? Yes. Um, and then you, how do you then do a um, analysis of a person's physical size, not just height, but if the person is particularly thin, particularly obese, uh, how does that, how do you look at that and what do you input into the program to accomplish that? Um, most of that is done through uh, photographs that you have from coroner's reports or police reports, photographs. So do you then take measurements of those photographs, for example, um, do the ratio comparisons and then put that ratio comparison onto the mannequin, as you say, to uh, make it as close as possible to the live event? Yes, the measurements that you can get from a coroner's report or a police report or, it, uh, or even any measurements that you can take. And you also look at photographs? Yes. There's a thing you can do which is uh, I do not only on that, but other in, say for example, uh, police took pictures of a scene. Uh, one of the things that's challenging with what I do is I come in after the fact. So I have to rely on police photographs that were taken at the scene. So a lot of times you don't have certain measurements for things, but you have, you may have one measurement for an item in a photograph. So if you have one measurement of an item in a photograph with photogrammetry, 
you can extrapolate the measurements of other items, and that's photographed. Just to speak very quickly, what you just said by photogrammetry, what is that, and how does that assist you in coming up with measurements? It's, uh, if you have one known object that you know the measurement of, uh, with software, you can extrapolate the measurements of other items in the scene. For example, if I'm standing here, and you know how tall this is, and you might know how tall this camera is, that that would assist you in telling you how tall I am? Yes, and other items, like I can tell how far away from the wall that you are by the position of your feet relative to the height of the wall. And that's what gives you the photogrammetric distance perspective, right? So if I was this much further away, you were looking at it, it might be different than if I was this close. Yes. You lay down a plane in the software, you lay down a plane, and if you um, know one measurement, you apply that measurement to the grid, to the plane, and it'll extrapolate the measurements of the other items. And that's all the consu consumer, I'm sorry, computer software that exists in these various programs we talked about. You don't necessarily know the algorithms or the, the math and physics behind it. You just know that it has been certified to work. Yes. <laughs> And um, this type of software, and we're talking about this concept of a motion suit, does that have application also in the entertainment industry? Yes. What type? The suit that I have, um, it was used in Avatar, Iron Man, X-Men, and they use it for creating uh, movements of the characters in the movies. And it also is used in games, gaming, uh, like Mad Madsen uh, football. So they put on the suit and record the movements and apply them to the figures. So in effect, when we see Robert Downey Jr. running around looking like Iron Man, it's actually a stuntman in a motion suit? Or he could be wearing it. Oh, OK. And then the Iron Man has been placed on top of him in the movie? in the computer in the 3D program. Okay. And um, we were talking, and I took you off on a bit of a path, we were talking about um, your experience in testifying. So you advised the court, I think you said about 2007, you testified about a case. Um, how many times have you testified in court where your animations were presented? And do you need your CV? Yeah. back to your CV. It seems to be close by, but not right here. Um, so if you could advise the court um, your experience in testifying regarding the animations. Um, animations or use of I'm, I'm the sorry. suit? Use of the suit and your presentations in court. Um, pretty much most of the work that I've done since I uh, acquired the suit in 2008. I'm sorry? Pretty much most of the cases that I've worked on since 2008. So probably uh, um, 20. Okay. And if you could um, advise the court the types of cases that you've worked on and what courts you presented them to. Um, that's also on my CV. Yeah. It's got a list of the counties and the. Sure. Just having a bit of a trouble finding it right now. I don't know if you have a copy of it on your I think I got um, it on my iPad. Computer. Sorry? I might have it on my iPad. Uh, if you don't mind, if the court doesn't mind a moment for you to get that, and we'll present a copy of her and have copies. Mr. Manti, would you like to see it when he brings it up? I actually have a copy, so okay. I don't need to see one, but... It was provided. I just... Um, <laughs> Not suggesting anything, but when it wasn't a hearing, then it didn't know that I needed that information. Okay. Um,
don't have it on here. I, I need it. Man, college is so nice. Just let us use what seems to be the only copy in the courtroom. That's the front of the record. It's highlighted, but I don't mind. If you don't mind, thank you very much. If that assists you then, tell us the type cases and the courtrooms that you have presented that work in. Um, I've worked on 59 criminal trials so far, uh, 21 civil trials, and I've done declaration or testified in 20 of those. Okay. So approximately 100 presentations, further by declaration or testimony? Oh, well, 59 was the total, or oh, 59 plus 21 civil. Okay. And you give a court, you give the court then an overview of the type of criminal cases that you've been involved in. Um, trying to figure out uh, shooting incidents. I've worked with the Department of Justice in uh, police officer-involved shootings, um, uh, stabbings. Um, it varies. Uh, quite a bit. Okay. In each of those 59 cases then, uh, did you take on the information that we've talked about, gather together data, and then make a graphic presentation, whether it's an animation or poster type presentations? Yes. And um, are we now talking about the spectrum of murder cases and aggravated batteries? I mean, do you know the charges or you just told the information? Um, sometimes I've been told more detail. Sometimes I'm just given the evidence and I uh, uh, do creation from the evidence. Within that context, let's focus on the 59 cases. Um, how much or what percentage of that would you have worked on behalf of the defense and what percentage on behalf of the prosecution? 100% um, on the defense. Okay. But that doesn't... Um, some of that has also to do with uh, defense of police officers in uh, police officer involved shootings. And if you would explain to the court what you mean by that and what cases you handled in that regard. Um, if the Department of Justice has a police officer that is uh, um, a civil case is brought against him or uh, um, a shooting occurred, then I've done work with them on uh, doing a reconstructions on that, also assisting them in court in the presentation of their material. Okay, again, focusing for a moment on the criminal cases, have you actually presented testimony uh, in court in any of those 59 cases? Yes, uh, in about eight, uh, presented personally or had my material presented? Had your materials presented um, after being qualified. Uh, yes, pretty much all 59. Okay, maybe just give some flavor to the court as to what courts you presented to, and then we'll talk about whether or not actual testimony was required. Um, I've been qualified as an expert uh, in, Depart let's see, Placer County, Alameda County. I've got... Uh, Placer County. P-L-A-C-E-R. I got about 16 counties here that... And that's, those are all in California, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, if you would, just for the record purposes, advise when you're talking about the counties, are these counties um, in which the courts of that county have authorized you to testify as an expert? Um, where you've actually presented or had your information presented to a court where it was qualified to be good information to be presented? Um, all, of, all the courts where my information has been presented, it's all been qualified, it's never been designed. If you would, list through the counties in California then um, and do it slow enough so the court reporter can get it down and there may be some need for spelling, just want to make sure it's a record. Okay, Placer County, Alameda County, Contra Costa County, San Bernardino County, Sacramento County, Los Angeles County, 
Napa County, Fresno County, Solano County, S O L A N O, Yolo County, San Francisco County, Riverside County, Stanislaw County, S T A N I S L A U S, San Mateo, Santa Clara, Orange County, Santa Cruz, and El Dorado. Have you um, ever testified in Florida before? No. Have you testified outside of California before? No. How long have you actually had the motion suits that you talked about a moment ago? Since 2008. And in those counties that you've testified, um, those counties, were you, did you testify in each one of those counties or was your information you created presented in those counties? Information that I, it was both. Okay. My information was um, through either uh, being as an expert witness testifying in court or a declaration. Because sometimes the material that I create can be testified to by another expert, like a ballistic expert or a medical expert or. Do I take it that in certain cases you might create the animation or the graphic and then that is admitted by what you call declaration, we may call affidavit such that the underlying graphic is brought to court even without you having to come in live and testify. Yes, I just speak to the accuracy of the creation. Okay. Have you um, actually testified in court um, concerning the accuracy and the methods used to, to create the animations or the graphics? Yes. And if you would advise the court um, as best you can, what counties first? I'm going to ask you, to the best of your recall, what cases and types of cases you've testified to in court. Um, you want to go through them one at a time, or however you want to best present that? Um, I don't have a listing of exactly which counties Just I... From your memory, what cases have you testified to in court? And what type of cases? Um, all the ones that I've testified to in court have been criminal okay. trials. So give the court then an example of some of the cases that you've testified to and what animation you presented and what you testified to regarding it. There was one in Placer County, uh, it was about four months ago. I testified in that on doing the uh, shooting reconstruction and that was to determine the position of the person shot and the position of the person shooting and then what, uh, what order of the shots that occurred and what position they were in when they were hit. And was that one of the examples you gave us a moment ago? No, this, was a, this is another example. And did you testify in that court? Yes. Were you qualified as an expert in this area of the, presenta and the creation of and presentation of graphics and animation? Yes, I was qualified as an expert and the motion capture suit was also accepted. Okay. Uh, another case where you testified um, in this regard? Um, there was one in Contra Costa County, uh, the one where uh, I was trying to determine uh, the position of the person of the three shots when he was shot in the car. Um, I was able to determine that the, uh, there was only one shot through the window and then the other two shots were outside of the vehicle. And was your testimony, were you qualified as an expert to give that testimony in that court? Yes, I was. Uh, one more, if you would, about another case where you testified in court and the basis for it. Um, oh, there was a uh, couple down in um, Merino Valley, down in Southern California, uh, there was Two of them actually. Uh, one of them was uh, um, a person was inside a house. They were threatening uh, suicide. Over, uh, they were chatting to somebody, saying they were going to kill themselves. Uh, 
police officers responded and uh, they were waiting at the corner of a garage uh, asking him to come out. One of the officers was looking out at the street uh, because people were starting to come around. The other officer was looking into the doorway. Um, so what I needed to do in that case was determine um, uh, who shot what, which officer did the shooting, and also the position of the person that was in the house. Um, in my reconstruction, the person in the house said that he was on the floor in the kitchen the entire time. Uh, he was charged with uh, two counts of attempted murder on a police officer. Um, I was able to show that uh, he was in the house the entire time because of the angle of the door when the bullets hit. The first police officer said that the person came out and uh, pointed a gun at him. So he started firing. He fired three shots. His partner turned around and just started firing, shot him, shot the partner in the elbow and continued firing into the doorway. I was able to show uh, which shots came first, the three shots, and what position the door was in. Uh, be and then the second series of shots, what position the door was in at that time and able to show that there was no way somebody could have come through the door when those shots went off because there was such tight space outside the door. If he was outside the door, he would have been hit. He wasn't hit, and there was no way for him to go in and out of the door, so he had to be in the... Um, was that testimony then accepted in that court? Yes. And did you actually give evidence or testimony before the court or the jury in that case? Yes. Of the um, 59 cases that you were involved in on the, on the criminal side, we'll talk about civil in a moment, but of those 59 cases, have there been other cases where you've been attempted to be qualified as an expert for the underlying graphics or animation where um, you were failed to be qualified as an expert? No. In all 59 then, either by affidavit or declaration or testimony, uh, you were able to give your testimony in regard to what you created? Um, declaration or testified was 20 cases. Okay. So in all of those cases, I've never been uh, disqualified. I've been qualified in all of them. Was the experience you had on the civil side similar, the other cases that you've talked about? Um, those were mostly information uh, designed for the attorneys for presenting their case to the jury. Were there any of those cases on the civil side where it actually went all the way to trial testimony where you gave testimony before a court or a jury? Not in the civil trials. Just on those in the criminal that we've already talked about? Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk a moment then about the Zimmerman case and um, <coughs> advise the court then what you did um, and how you first became involved in this case. Um, first became involved at the, uh, towards the end of April. I initially had a conversation in August, but um, my first meeting with the, uh, the attorneys was towards the end of April. We had talked in August of 2012, correct? Yes. And then you went through um, a medical condition that sort of took you out of, um, out of sorts for several months? Yes. Okay. That's all resolved? Um, we'll see. Okay. Um, and now you're back to work, and we talked again, was it April of this year? Yes. Okay. And what information did you then gather and review? Uh, well, first, what task were you given as far as work on behalf of this case? Uh, the scope of work? Yes. Was to do a reconstruction of the scene um, with the information that we had and creation of a uh, um, an animated timeline. Okay. And what information, was that something within your qualifications? Yes. Is that similar to um, what you have done in these other cases that we've talked about, both 59 criminal cases and the 20 or so that either live testimony or declaration testimony was given? Yes. Uh, there's not a lot of opportunity, though, to have live audio uh, during um, 
the occurrence. So, so this that, is that that was different in this case where we're able to have uh, work audio into it with the 911 call. Somewhat unique because we had actual audio recreation, or audio evidence, uh, real time evidence available for you to use in your recreation. Yes, it helps you with the timeline. Okay. Similar, I guess, to when there's a security video camera that exists and you have some of that information that makes it that much more accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, video surveillance did not exist in this case, though? No. So this was within the area of your expertise where you've been qualified before to create this type of graphic and animation? Yes. So what information did you then gather or was given to you to assist you in the work that you've done? Um, the discovery from the um, district attorney's office. Uh, photographs, coroner photographs, coroner reports, um, police reports, um, audio from the 911 calls. Um, there was also investigation or uh, questioning at the police department of witnesses. Depositions? Depositions, yes. Um, also photographs that they took of the scene um, and then also total station data that they, from their measurements. Okay. Um, were you able, was there um, any information that you needed in order to create the animation or the graphics that you did not have available to you? Um, use of the motion capture suit at the scene, that wasn't available to me. Um, so I, I made uh, two visits to the scene. Okay. So in effect, you came back once you have the information and the foundation for the animation or the recreation, um, you then came here to utilize the motion station, motion capture suits? Yes. Okay. Do you recall when that was done approximately? Um, second week in May. And uh, explain to the court then what you do with that and who, who did it and um, <coughs> how you assure accuracy in that regard? Um, to assure ac accuracy, uh, that's where it's good that I can interact with the suits at the scene because uh, if there's a slope or other physical characteristics of the scene, um, you catch that in the movements of the person that's walking over the surface. In this case, was there any concern that you had with the data that was given to you um, that was gleaned from law enforcement? Uh, there was, it looked good except for there were seven points uh, that were um, obviously, they were labeled windows and they were obviously not in the position of the windows. They were actually sort of in trees where the photo station laser bounced off something different than what the person thought it was? Yes, where they set up the, the total station at the T intersection of the sidewalk um, they pointed it up at the second story window on the right side and it went through the tree and going through the tree it picked up a few branches. So there's uh, five points or six points on the one side and I think I believe one point on the left side that went through a tree. So you've got points in the computer that are just hanging in space so it's easy to see uh, that it's at the location of the tree. and not to use it. Were you able to address that or fix it in your um, software that you ended up using? Um, I didn't manipulate the data at all. I just used the other points that they had. So in effect, just excise those out because they were obviously sort of in the way or errors? Yes. Did you, in addition to the motion capture suit, we'll talk about that in just a second, did you do any other measuring of the scene now that you're on scene? Um, I also had another piece of equipment. It's called a Matterport. M-A-T-T-E-R-P-O-R-T. It's a Matterport scanner. It also sets up on a tripod and um, it has a little computer in it and some cameras. So it has one camera that takes photographs and another camera will uh, take infrared photos 
for distance purposes. So you set this up, and uh, with the iPad interface, you can just hit scan, and it'll twirl around in 360, and it'll scan the area around the scanner. And you just walk it through the scene. So it uh, captures all the little intricate uh, parts of the scene, along with uh, texture map of the photos. A what map, I'm sorry? Texture map of the photos. And how so, does that assist you in what you created in this case? Uh, it was very helpful in getting the slope of the slope and the positioning of the buildings and the trees and the sidewalk. Was that, did that then make it even a more accurate rendition of the scene than the total station was able to give you? Um, yes, it, it added to the total station data. And I verified the Matterport scanner with the total station data so that it, it all matched up. It matched pretty well so that what you came up with in your review matched the total station data? Yes. Did the Matterport then allow for a better um, graphic representation of the sloping that existed on the actual ground? Yes. <clears throat> and total station had not done that? They didn't take very many, uh, um, they didn't measure very many points. They, they mainly measured the uh, there's a couple metal drains and a sprinkler head or piece. They went around and measured those and the edge of the sidewalk and then the building, but they didn't do uh, in the location of the trees, but they didn't do really any measuring of the slope. So did the Matterport then allow for a even more accurate rendition of the sloping of the ground in the area where the T intersection was, the area where the body was, Trevor Lawton's body was and other points along the way? Yes. Mr. Romero, um, Mr. Shoemaker has been standing almost yeah, an hour. I, I, I thought that when you wanted him to stand at the podium yeah. that it was going to be a short presentation. Would you like to take a seat, sir? How much longer? I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, we're getting to the, the meat of it right now and that's not going to, I have to have him review the animation for you and the picture, so I'm going to have to drag him back down here in a moment, so I'm going to move it along. Thank you. So, um, you went to the scene, got everything that you needed to start working on what your project was, correct? Correct. So then, what did you do with that information? Well, we were talking now, again, about the motion capture suits, who did them, and what frailties exist with having other people use the motion capture suits. Um, there was a couple uh, volunteers from the um, your law office that put the suits on. Um, then as far as the timing uh, for the second part of the scenario where they were on the ground, we used, uh, or I used the audio from the 911 call for the timing of it, to time it with the shot of the gun. Okay. Did you also avail for you, or to you, John Good's um, police statements and I guess at that point deposition testimony regarding what he said he saw and what happened. Yes, that was used for the position, their positioning. Did you also have information available to you from a Ms. Mora, M-O-R-A, a woman who said she saw um, George Zimmerman on top of Trayvon Martin some seconds after the shot? Yes. And did that assist you in the creation of your animation, putting the bodies where other witnesses saw them. Yes. Did you also then have, as you mentioned, what we now call the Lauer 911 uh, audio, which um, has in it the shot and a, a matter of time before the shot itself. Yes. What did you also have? Whatever other information was available to you from the discovery. There's also uh, Miss Lauer's. Um, police report statement. And that included her statement that the she first heard the altercation occur at the T intersection? Yes. You also had Jeremy Weinberg's information available to you and he cooperated that? Yes, from the same location. Now as we fast forward through this, you had created some poster graphics, we'll call them stills of the scene, and we'll get to those in just a minute, um, based upon that testimony as well? Yes. Did you most recently 
remove Mr. Weinberg's statement from one of those posters since I advised you that he ended up not testifying your trial? Yes. So along the way, and we'll get to it in just a minute, were you modifying the uh, animation and the posters to come in line with actual trial testimony? Yes. As at least as it was disclosed to you by me or on my behalf. Yes, to get the most up-to-date, accurate um, representation of it. Okay. And um, were you in fact able to create an animation um, based upon the information available to you? Yes. Before we view that, let's just go over the sources of that information. You had testified a moment ago that you had seen discovery, correct? Correct. That's what we call it here, and that's including witness statements, depositions, and other information like autopsies and police reports, correct? Correct. And did you also have available to you um, diagrams made by the witnesses, such as John Good did a diagram showing stick figures with certain um, placement of bodies? Yes. And, any, and all the other information within the discovery? Correct. I know that you don't know the full answer to this question, but did you get um, a lot of information from the defense, including all the witness statements, police reports, and um, diagrams that you felt were necessary to create your animation? Yes, I did. Did you even receive a lot of information that was extraneous or unnecessary in creating your animation, but that you wanted to review it to see if it was relevant? Yes. You also then have conversations with me or people on my behalf regarding the creation of the animation. Correct. Um, what other sources of information did you have in order to come up with the animation and the posters that you did? Um, pretty much everything that you mentioned. Okay, my, anything else uh, besides that? The discovery itself and conversations with me. Um, my going to the scene and uh, taking, uh, scanning the scene, uh, photographing the scene, um, doing the motion capture. Was there anything um, that you would like to have had in, to assist you in creating the posters and the animation that was not available to you in this case? I believe I need I I had everything that I needed to create the scene. Okay. I mean, aside from a video of the whole event or something that would. Okay. Um, then I'm going to ask you to present the animation you created. We'll talk about it, but um, we try one more time for a moment to see if we can get this projector to cooperate because it's going to look a lot better than. It was working. It was working yesterday. Do we need to get Victor in here? They can fix it during lunch. I still have a jury sitting back yes. there now for an hour. Okay, let's try it. Um, I had not anticipated that we were going to take this time. So if you'll please bring it up to the bench and I'll look at it from there.
Posters, which is another um, thing that he created. These are the new ones? Um, some of them are new. We took out Weinberg, for example. I still don't use this. <coughs> These are the new Testimony at the bench, just so he can at least identify what they are. He's going to show are. them to me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go through this, and I may question you about the animation in a minute. But if you would, just advise the court what this is first of all, and how it was created. Uh, this was created from uh, a still image from the uh, 3D model that I created for the animation. It's to explain uh, the location of the um, the markers and the the witnesses. And just so I'm clear, where did you get the markings, where you have the markers, how did, the, how did you identify them and put them at that particular location? Um, it's straight from the total station data. Okay. They not I not only used total station data, but they also had a, um, a flat 2D uh, illustration of the scene from their data. And that was incorporated as well? Yes, so those, the location of these markers are exactly where on that. Okay, next slide. <coughs> same thing, the same thing. Just same thing, different view. Different view. Next slide. This one's to show uh, the slope. And again, that came more from the matter port than the total station. Um, it's from the Matterport, but it's verified with the total station. The, uh, the different areas where the, the concrete, the sprinkler and the drain heads, they matched up with the Matterport. So that was, I was able to verify the slope. But this does give you a better slope than the total station alone would give you? A better rendition of the slope? Correct. They don't. On their total station, they just had sidewalk marked and those. Right. Uh, they did not run like a, They did not run like a bunch of points on the ground, which would have given you the slope, and that's what you did with Matterport. Yes. Okay. Next one. Then this is just to show uh, photographs from uh, discovery of what was at those markers. The flashlights and where they were found. Yes. Okay, next one. Again, different parts uh, of different items, where they were located. And for example, top left hand corner is the picture that you just imported from the picture we gave you. Yes. Bottom left is the picture from the um, medical examiner with the Mr. Martin's wet pants. Yes, from the scene. Okay, and then the cartridge case at the bottom. Yes. And then the cell phone. Yes. Okay. And in the middle? This? Yes. Um, that's from the point of view of Mr. Good. Oh, well, you can see right behind the pictures on the left is Mr. Good's head. In you effect. can see his ear right back there. And now it's, it's taken with a 50 millimeter lens uh, in the software. So that is what most closely uh, resembles what a person will see. 
Okay, and um, there's a line going sort of right above the cartridge case. Is that a distance measurement from what to what? The edge of the porch concrete to uh, to the marker number eight. Number eight. And when you say 50 millimeter, that's the way the human eye looks at an event. It's about 49 or 50 millimeters. Exact measurement, I believe, is 49.5, but um, it's just rounded off to 50. So you look at you, this is a perspective that one would see as a human is looking at it through a human's eyes. Yes, if you were standing there, that's what, that's how they would appear. If you that's were the perspective. There. Perspective, yes. Okay. Next one. Um, this is going back to the T intersection. And this was the one where we initially had Mr. Weinberg on it as well. Um, he didn't testify, so we just have Ms. Lauer. I think that's her trial testimony as to where she thought the altercation occurred. Yes. Okay. So it's an explanation of why I placed him there. So it's a. Okay. And that is John Good's head off there to the left as sort of a, a focus point? Yes. And that again is a 50 millimeter presentation? Yes. With the distance included? Yes. And that states what um, John Good testified to at trial regarding the, um, what he saw in the people's um, descriptions? Yes. yes. Next one. And that is a, that's Ms. Morris' testimony from trial as to what she saw when she looked out around her column? Yes. Is that the column on the right-hand side? Yes, there's a aerial map here showing where her condo is. And is that also a perspective of what she would see from her location? Yes, it's a 50 millimeter lens. Also in all these photographs, uh, I didn't try to reconstruct the lighting um, because it's more important to see detail. Okay. Obviously, if, if I was Ms. Moore looking at this, the lighting was much darker back then, correct? Correct. So that's one frailty, if you will, of the presentation of the posting is because if the lighting was what it was that night, almost nothing could be seen as far as your poster presentation? The jury would have a hard time seeing detail. Is that the last one? Yes. But I think the problem they're having is with the Apple computer uh -huh. um, interaction, and they're going to check it out over lunch. Okay. We'll um, change it out to a Mac, to a PC, and get this presentation on a PC should whatever part okay. of it be Do you have any other questions? Uh, just very briefly, which is, um, so you have been doing this type of graphic and animation work and presenting to court for the past 13 years or so? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I think you testified that you have not, your work has not ever been disqualified or disallowed in a court? Correct. Um, tell me your awareness of the industry of animation um, and other people who do this type of work. Um, the type of work that I do, I'm the only one in the United States with a wireless motion capture suit, so I'm unique in that way. Okay. There are other people who use similar motion capture suits, those being the older style, the one with the balls, correct? 
Um, I believe some reconstruction are using it, but um, it's really very rare that you find a reconstruction that has a motion capture suit, whether the it's air, involves or the wireless. The area of reconstruction of events, though, um, you've been involved in that for how long? Um, 13 years. And um, this type of work is also uh, accepted, is it not, in the entertainment community, as we've talked about? Yes. And that's used, as we talked about, in both video games and in motion pictures, such as Avatar and Iron Man? Yes. And um, this software that you utilize, um, tell the court, um, where that fits into the industry of reconstruction of events. The 3D software I use or the Ares 360? Either or? as a compendium or individually. Um, it's just a, a, one of the key elements that I use in reconstructing. Um, and, how, and how long has that software been around? Uh, Luxology has been around Probably four years, but the, I believe four. It started out as version 201. I'm, they're up to, to 701 now, so it's been around for a while. Okay. And do you ever attend um, seminars or any type of conventions where other reconstructionists interact or talk about information in regard to this industry? Yes. Um, well, the software actually has a users group that gets together, the Moto software, and I've given presentations there on okay. the work that I do. How often do you give presentations to that group? Um, I've just presented to them to once. Okay. And um, in that user group, is that made up of the people who use this software on an ongoing basis? Yes. We're talking about the ARIS 360 now? No, that is the Moto software. I'm sorry. There's a group, the Ares 360 gets together uh, with a webinar every Friday. Okay. And do you keep up on that part of the industry, the interaction between other people who use this software? Yes. And is this software one of the softwares that is accepted in the community of people who create animations or recreate scenes, whether it be for accident reconstruction or other types of recreations? Yes. Um, the Highway Patrol uses, uh, I think there's three basic kinds of software that is used for car accident and accident or uh, crime scene reconstruction for the police departments, which is uh, Visual Statement, Ares 360, and there's another software um, which is called uh, Crime, Crime Time or something like that. That's what uh, uh, Sanford Police uses on theirs. Is the um, software then you use uh, some of the most up-to-date and current software that's available for this type of work? Yes, Ares 360 and Visual Statement are the industry standard for um, accident and crime scene reconstruction. And do your contemporaries who do work similar to yours, though they may not have the, the suits that you have, use this type of software to do their work? Uh, some of them. Most of it's mostly used in police departments for um, their reconstruction. Ares 360 or the Moto or? Probably 80% of Ares 360's uh, customers I've asked them. They said 80% are police departments. The rest are accident reconstructionists like myself or uh, crime scene reconstructionists or private investigators. And you interact with these people, including law enforcement, on these user group um, meetings that you have? Yes, you can ask questions. And um, if you have anything coming up from the week, you can get an answer at the end of the week. Within the context, then, of accident reconstructionists and, and animators, um, is this software then the type of software which is used in that industry? Um, Yes, mine's a little bit, mine's kind of like cutting edge. Yours is more advanced, correct? Yes. And even you say that uh, you're the only one who uses the, the new style of um, motion suits for your type of work, correct? Correct. 
They are used, however, again, in the entertainment industry, much more so, correct? Correct. They're also used in, like I mentioned, the medical re rehabilitation. Uh, is any limitation to their, their availability based upon their expense? Yes. And they're still quite expensive? Yes. Okay. No further questions, John? Yes. Cross. Just, if I could ask for a five-minute break before we do that, and I would also ask the witness to just assume the, the stand. Um, we can have a five-minute recess, but we'll be in recess for five minutes. Thank and you. when we come back, Mr. Shoemaker, if you please take the stand. Please be seated. Is Mr. Shoemaker here? Or? How much longer do you think that this is all going to take? Because I've had a jury sitting back there since 9 o'clock. I stayed late last night so I could get this accomplished and was told I didn't have to. Um, so how much longer do you think it's going to take? I'm going to ballpark it at 45 minutes. Sir. 45 minutes? No. We'll do this after afterwards. I'm, I'm not having a jury sit back here for another 45 minutes doing nothing. Um, so we'll have to do this in the afternoon. Mr. Shoemaker, you can remain outside. We'll continue the hearing after court. Are we ready with your next witness? Because I want to bring the jury in. Is the defense ready with your next witness? Okay, are we ready to bring the jury in? Very brief. Very brief. Put it on the 